Okay, this is a complicated one, but that's the name. And I go slow through the recipe so you can pause frame. Now this is one of the nicest things you'll ever eat, but it takes time. But trust me, you will not regret it. It's incredibly good. Okay, so basically with this recipe where we are, I've already started marinating things. I've got the rice soaking, and it soaks until it's basically ready to cook. My eggs soaking in saffron here. Always use the warm water with saffron because it helps it, you know, infuse better. I use chicken eggs because we can't get quail eggs around here. Yeah, so quail's much nicer. Well, yeah. they're, not, they're, they're sweeter and they're, quail eggs are lush. They are nice. But anyway, they're good. So basically in this marinade, according to the recipe um, we've got natural yogurt ginger garlic garam masala chili powder um, I think that's it um, so basically I've let it marinate until we're ready to use it which is roughly about now we've got a whole deboned butterfly chicken which I've done myself <coughs> um, so now we've got this here this is the onions that is finely chopped and cooked with a bit of ghee and crushed garlic, garam masala, chilli powder and turmeric so it's yeah. important to let these cool before you add them to your lamb mince so basically what we're going to do now we're going to add this to this lamb mince yeah hang on ghee Now that is some unhealthy stuff, but it tastes absolutely awesome. Yeah, pure ghee. So, Pete, forget it. You're on a diet. Everyone else gets stuck in. That is brilliant. Get some ghee. Expensive too. That's eight pounds. Yeah, very expensive. <laughs> 18, uh, so that's, that's about seventeen, eighteen dollars a tub. Anyway, okay. I'll show up now. So this is lamb mince here, not beef mince. So now, because these onions are cool, I'm going to pop them in here and basically just mix it all together. Easier to do it with your hands than a fork. So you want to get it all mixed in nice. And one morning... Hang on, hang on. Look at this little rat here. It's chewing everything. We're waiting for it. We're getting a new floor put down here, so we just ripped it. We've got this old tile floor. So we're getting all new floor, new new kitchen coming in soon with the new utility we're building. Look at this little rascal. Anyone want a dog? Anyway. No, my right. dog. No. <laughs> Sorry, go on. So basically what I'm doing now, I'm just mixing all of this, all that together. Okay, so now it's sort of partially mixed. I'm going to add some salt and pepper and I'll get back to you in a second. Okay, so what I've done now, I've put the bone chicken down, as you can see it's still got the legs on it, um, bone chicken skin side down and this lamb mixture, you leave a third of it in the bowl because you make meatballs out of it later. So basically then I put a few eggs along the length of it and then squish the meat up. So basically now what we've got to do is try and roll it. 
So, excuse me a minute, sweetie, can I get in there? So, we've got our little helper here. So, I have Hang on, i got no light. In a long time, so... Let's just try and grab it. It's really, really slippery. It does look as hard as it seems, because this is stuffed. I mean, this is a whole chicken with a whole chicken stuffed inside of it. <laughs> you know, elephant in a suitcase. Watch up there. So, I'll get that through there. Right, skewer. And skewers help to hold it in place. Whilst you sort of wrap it. And if you guys don't try this, you need your hair bread. It's a long recipe, but once you've done it once, you've, you've, you know, you, you've got it down. Because the legs are not actually boned in this, be careful because the skin tends to rip when you try and wrap it. So then stuff the stuffing back in underneath. Yep. Like so. And wrap that end under. So, and then you need to get some string. And okay, we'll pause now. Yeah, so I'll get some string and tie this one up. And while she's doing that, I'm having a glass of that. That is nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, alright, back now. Okay, so. Use my first bit of string and I pull it down. Just meat string. Okay. You know, to about there. And bring it together. And I just pull it. And then knot it. And then I need to cut that. I'm going to get the other string and then cut the tail ends later so put it round that bit there and pull here and tie this bit and then that's that bit done there. So now basically what I want to do, I want to go around this side. So I just need to cut a few bull bits of string now. Do this basically exactly the same on the sides. Oh. And then it goes in the oven. So I'll show you when it's fully strained. Okay, so now it's all tied. You can see the sides a bit when it's you know, all stuffed and tied. And then basically any remaining yogurt mixture that you got left over, you just spread all over the top. And basically now this just goes in the oven for about an hour, hour and 20 minutes. And you know, put a skewer in until the juices come clear basically. So whilst that's cooking, there's other bits to get on with, but for now that's it. One important tip, because of the turmeric in the onions after you've stuffed the chicken, one what is really, really hard to do because it's really slippery, slidey. Always wash your hands straight away after as you're going to have yellow hands for a day or two because of the turmeric. It stains terrible. So okay, in the oven this goes and back to it later. Okay, so with the remaining mince that I had left over, rolled it into meatballs, fried them just till they're sort of browned on each side. Really, excuse me, I've got hiccups. And then when you do them with the juice that's left over from the meatballs, you add a cat can of chopped tomatoes and then what you do you top that up with 150 ml of water reach the boiling point and just set it aside so that's that done so what we're doing now we're doing the rice so instead of just boiling the rice as we always do every time I'm heating my ghee in here and now here I've got five cloves four cardamom pods two bay leaves and a cinnamon stick so what we're going to do now, we're just going to chuck this in the wok and just leave it fry for sort of a minute or two till it's aromatic and then we add the drained rice then which is this here which has been washed a few times, drained, soaked and drained 
So then basically you just let the ghee soak it all up and then you add the water and then it all goes in a pot together with the chicken. So come back in 10. Okay and in case you're wondering what this is, this is rice pudding. Made it with cinnamon, nutmeg, whole milk and double cream. Really fattening but very very nice and sugar and butter. Really good. But as a special treat in the winter, I make it with Bailey's Irish Cream and that's the nicest rice pudding you'll ever try. I'll do a recipe on it one day. Okay, bye for now. Okay, so chicken is cooked now. So now what we do, this is how we finish it. We put all these meatballs in the bottom of the casserole dish. Just like so. Mm. And then we pour the sauce over there, like so. And then I've taken the spices out of the rice because I don't want the kids to bite on them. So now we spoon over. Some of this rice. If anyone heard a weird noise, that wasn't a dog, that was my belly. <laughs> I'm starving. Okay. So I'll pop that down there like that. A little bit more. And then what we do, this is the rose water and the cream. And just splash salt. So just pour some of that on there, like that, and then I need to grab the chicken. Hang on, before you grab it, let me zoom in on it. That's what it looks like. Cooked. And bear in mind, you can, you could. Oh, it's so tempting. You could put that on a plate and then just carve that like a loaf of bread. And seriously, I want to do that, but no, okay. I can't, I can't. And then this goes in here. And let me kind of squidge it in as best you can. And then we just spoon all of the rest of the rice as much as you can get in. This is enough to feed about six to eight people. Oh, she uses a, a metal item on a non-stick pan. I'm not mm. scraping. Mm. Okay. these over to the side like so and then what we do pour the rest of this cream over like that and then plain flour, water make up a little dough and you basically put this around you need it to to seal One thing when you're cooking this meal, if you like to eat about six, five, six o'clock, it's really important that you sort of start doing it early in the afternoon because it really does take quite a long time to yeah. do. Start the day before. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth it. We wouldn't be bothered if we if it wasn't worth it. We wouldn't do it. 
Okay. Um, we'll eat this tonight. We'll eat it tomorrow. We'll eat it the next day. This is, you know, okay. it's a lot of food. So, and then cooking three times if you like. Let's squash that lid on. So you've got that seal. Let's roll that in. And then add the G clamps. <laughs> Put in your vice. And there we go. That just goes in the oven now for about 20 to 30 minutes. But then you're dead because you're so hungry. And then that's it. You're done. So, we'll show you when it's ready. Okay, bye for now. Okay, so here it is. Finished. So that makes the seal. There we go. And voila. Time to dish up. That's not good, that can go to the dogs. Okay. And that's it. That's that. And then that's the rice pudding for pudding. Yum. <laughs> okay. okay, bye for now. Okay. So there he is. So now we're just gonna cut the strings and slice it up. Okay, and then carve it like bread. It smells delicious. <laughs> what it looks like. See the egg there. Chicken, there's a little stuff in. Some rice, meatballs. And there's loads left. Okay, that's a complicated recipe. <laughs> Ta-da. See you tomorrow. Bye.